a few months ago, I found this plant that I really, really loved. And even though I loved how beautiful the flowers looked, how beautiful it looked, the plant was hardly thriving. So when I planted it, it was almost dying. But then after trimming it and giving it a little bit of time, the plant just blossomed. So each and every time when I look at this plant, it really reminds me of God and how God prunes us. And during the time of pruning, during the time when the Lord is telling you to let go of those things that are not pleasing to him, during the time when the Lord is stripping you of the flesh, it may seem harsh and it, it may seem painful. It may feel painful. But when you embrace God's pruning, when you embrace his warning, his correction, the result of that is so beautiful. You are going to become a fruitful tree, bringing glory and honor to the Lord. So the Lord brings warning, correction, and rebuke, not because he hates us, but because of how much he loves us. Because like this plant that I was talking about, he wants us to just blossom. In John chapter 15, verse 2, Jesus says that every branch that bears fruit, God is going to prune it to make it more fruitful. So that pruning comes in the form of God stripping us of the flesh, God stripping us of all those things that are unpleasing to him. So each message of warning that the Lord may give us through whatever means that he may choose to use, it's meant to beautify us more for our bridegroom and to make us to bear more fruit. This was a message received from the Lord on 5th October 2024. I had woken up to pray in the night at midnight and when I was done with prayer I went back to sleep but when I went back to sleep I couldn't really sleep because I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit calling me to come and spend time in prayer with the Lord. So I woke up and I went to the living room to go and pray and it was during this time when I was praying that the Lord gave me this message not just for those of you who are listening to me but this message is for the entire church for the servants of the lord for every member of the church of jesus christ and for me as well so the message that the lord god gave me is this the lord will sift and each man's work will go through the fire are you able to withstand and survive god's fire in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13, the Bible says that each man's work is going to be tested by fire. And if your work is burnt, you're going to make a loss. If your service for the Lord is going to be burnt through the fire, then you're going to have a loss. But if your work or your service for the Lord is going to withstand the holy fire of God, then you're going to get a reward for your work. And the Lord said, the service of many will be rejected. It's not just about you talking about holiness, but it's about where your heart is. So the Lord was saying, it's not just about the fact that you're preaching holiness. It's not just about the fact that you are living a holy life, but God is looking at the motives of your heart. When you are living a holy life, when you're living, uh, serving the Lord, whatever way that you're serving the Lord, either through your life, through the things that you're doing, or through preaching, through teaching, through evangelizing, through, you know, all other service that we may do for the Lord. The Lord in all this is saying, I'm looking at the motives of your heart, not just the thing that is seemingly good not just the fact that you're preaching holiness but the lord was saying i'm looking at your heart as well i'm looking at the motive of your heart why are you preaching why are you serving god is your motive pure because only then 
are you going to be able to withstand the fire? You know, because when we go back to the word of God, you know, we're going to find that there were certain people who were serving the Lord, not because they really loved Jesus and they wanted to serve him, you know, but they were serving the Lord for impure motives, selfish motives out of competition and jealousy. And all these things are the works of the flesh that the Bible warns us about. So we're going to find the Apostle Paul talking about this topic where he was saying there were some people who out of competition, they were preaching the gospel. You know, they were doing a service for the Lord, just trying to outdo someone else, not because they really loved God. You know, they really loved the Lord and they just wanted to preach. But these are people who go and open a church just in order to show someone and say, look, I'm doing better than you. Look, here I am. I'm going to open a bigger church. Look, now I have uh, more people in my church than this pastor whom I'm competing against. And sometimes these people may even be preaching holiness. They may be preaching about repentance, but the motives of the heart are not pure. Their service is not for the Lord. Their service is out of the flesh. It's in order to compete with someone else. It's in order to bring self-gratification, you know, to feel like, look, I'm greater than so and so. And the Lord was warning, you know, that when he sifts and when your work is put through the fire, is it going to withstand the fire or is it going to be consumed? So the Lord was, was also talking about, you know, uh, people who are in the church and their loyalty has been taken away from the Lord. Now they are no longer obeying the Lord because they, they are serving Jesus. You know, they are not just doing it for Jesus Christ. They are not doing it with a pure motive of wanting to please God, but they are, their obedience is in order to gratify the needs of their organization or their church. You know, they do all these things not because they are convinced with their heart and say, this is what God requires of me. They are doing these things not because of Jesus, but they are doing these things because they want to be approved by their organization and by their church or by this person or that person. And all that service that uh, people are doing with such impure motives, it's all going to be consumed in God's refining fire. It's all going to be consumed in God's fire on that day. That is why the Bible warns us and says, each man's work is going to be consumed in the fire. It's going to go through the fire. It's going to be tested by fire. So whatever we are doing for the Lord, we need to search the motives of our heart. If our motive is to please the Lord and nothing else, when we search deep down our hearts, our motive isn't just to gratify an organization. Our motive isn't just to compete against someone. Our motive isn't just in order to self-exhort and be able to brag, you know. If our motive is to be faithful to the Lord, and to be true and to just obey Jesus, then our work is going to be accepted by the Lord. Let me give you this example. When a person teaches about holiness and then people start to praise them and you know, like they preach this sermon about holiness and people start to praise them and to applaud them. And then because of that uh, human praise, so, when they go to, to preach again at another place or at another time, their motive has been defiled. Like now, even when they, are, when, when they are going to preach this message, they are not thinking to themselves to say, let me say this because this is what Jesus Christ wants me to say. But 
deep down in their heart they are thinking let me say this because you know last time people really really loved uh to hear this you know so even though they are preaching the right thing the motive of their heart is now defiled by the enemy and so their work may even save someone but when the motives of their hearts are tested and when the lord sifts his harvest very few are going to withstand the fire that is what the lord god told me that we have to search the very motives of our hearts regardless of whether you preach you know or whether you teach or whether you know you are just a member or uh, in the church regardless of your position like what is the reason why you are serving the lord are you obeying jesus because now you know uh, your organization really really commended uh this thing that you're doing or is it all about jesus the motives of our hearts have to be all about jesus and nothing else and that is the only way that we're going to withstand the the fire that is the only way that our work is going to survive the fire but if the motivation of our service for the lord if it's going to be competition or jealousy it's going to be self gratification self exaltation then we're going to fail the test that was what the lord god was telling me so he was saying be careful don't fall in the traps that people have fallen in that satan has laid before children of god you know and if you look at all these things that satan uses to defile the servants of the lord they are all just an act of the flesh nothing to do with the spirit and it is only because we do not see things the way that the lord god sees them because to man people open up a church and say you know in the beginning uh, they open up a church and they want to serve god and then as the church starts to grow now instead of their loyalty being to jesus now they are all about keeping the people keeping the numbers they are all about you know i want my church to have a lot of people now it's all about the numbers now they are no longer caring about loyalty to god now their heart has been defiled you know i want people to stay in the church without loyalty to god so the lord is saying it's because we don't see how he sees because we don't judge how god judges because god is a righteous judge so to us as human beings we may think it's the number of the people in the church that is important in order for me to be a great servant of god you know i need to have like a thousand people in my church in order for me to be a great servant of the lord in order to, you know in order for me to have that you know that heavenly reward and you know and, and it actually reminds me of something that jesus christ had told me uh somewhere in 2015 when the lord was telling me you know you people on earth you have labeled some people and called them god's generals and then the lord was saying some of these people whom you are you on earth are calling god's generals they are not really the ones who are regarded as such in heaven that was what the lord was telling me and that is because he doesn't see how we see we see the numbers you know we see you, we measure by human measurements but the, then the lord was telling me that there are people who were never even heard of like by the by by the world like to become famous to become known yet they so faithfully served jesus and they are the ones that in heaven would be regarded uh for such a position like that 
but then there are many people whom you you can label on earth and say this was god's general look he preached to like uh 20 million people but then the lord says no he's not god's general so the lord was saying because he's not man god isn't man he's not measuring the way man measures to man it's about what you can see you know you can see uh let's say this person has preached to like a billion people and so you say oh wow what a great man of god but the lord was saying i searched the motives of the person's heart when the person was preaching to those uh, one billion people what was their motivation what was the state of their heart where was their loyalty was it to become known was it to become famous was it to just maintain people in in a church in an organization did this person faithfully serve jesus was it self-exhortation was it competition god searches the heart and then he says numbers don't even mean anything like for me to see someone as god's general is not even the numbers it's the heart that god is looking at it's the heart so there may be someone out there you know who 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 may be so faithful to jesus like the their only motivation was to serve the lord never to be known never to be recognized never to be a servant of men until the very end they faithfully served jesus not caring what they would lose not not desiring any earthly reward and you find that god elevates that person much more than the person who had preached to let's say like two billion people so on earth people are going to be saying this was god's general he look his church had two billion people but then the lord is going to say no this is the person who deserves to be given this prize so the lord was saying the reason why people fall for these traps of satan to say let me become a servant of people you know let me just grow my church let me just grow my church you know let, let i don't you know i don't want to offend people i don't want to offend people with my message and all these things it's because they think god is man they don't understand the heart of god they don't understand how god works they don't understand his judgment so god was saying when he sifts by his holiness and his judgments how many of his servants are going to survive the sifting how many of his servants are serving him with a very pure motive of only wanting to be faithful to jesus christ without wanting to please people without wanting to start uh, speaking things that people want to hear but only what the lord is speaking only what the lord is saying not caring about anything else not caring about the empty praises of man how many people are serving the lord without any desire to be you know to be exhorted but only for jesus alone to be exhorted only for you know for for what god wants to be spoken so that is why the lord was saying will your work survive the fire will your holiness survive the fire when the lord tests the very intents of our hearts are we going to be found to be loyal to jesus or are we going to be found to be loyal to our organization to want to be, you know you just want to be pleasing your pastor you want to please the people in your church jesus is not even on your mind is your service for jesus going to withstand the consuming fire of the lord so the lord was saying go back to your first love take a step back into the very presence of god because that is the only place where the motives of your heart are going to be purified. Take a step back to that place when you 
first gave your life to Jesus Christ and it was just you and Jesus and no one else. Take a step back into the very presence of God when God first called you and it had nothing to do with anyone else. When you heard God's call for you to serve him and for you to follow him. When God first brought you out of the world into his light and you really loved Jesus and your only desire was to serve God, take a step back to that place so that you may be faithful to the Lord, so that your heart may be loyal to Jesus and you may not be an idolater, either worshiping yourself or worshiping other people. Uh, when we read Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 23 to 25, uh, as well as uh, chapter 9, verse 3, we're going to find that God is a consuming fire and God is referred to as a consuming fire because of his holiness and that means anything unholy cannot withstand god's fire so when god tests our work it means that anything done of the flesh is not going to withstand the fire you know when you when you sing when you worship when you pray when you fast is it to be seen by man or is it only to please the lord because if it is an act of the flesh, wanting man's praises, wanting man to, to, to say, look, you're such a good Christian, your obedience, is it an act, a work of the flesh? Or are your motives really to please the Lord? Is it just for people to think you're a Christian? Or is it really that you want to please Jesus Christ? Because anything unholy, any unholy motive is not going to survive the fire of God. So that is why the Lord is asking that, are you going to withstand God's holy fire? Or is your service going to be rejected? Because the Lord says that very few are serving him with a pure heart. So when we read in Malachi chapter 3 verse 2, the Bible says that, but who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he's like a refiner's fire and like a launderer's soap. So when we come to Proverbs chapter 16, verse 2, the Bible says that people may be pure in their own eyes, but then the Lord examines the motives of their heart. So we may look holy, we may act holy, you know, we may do all manner of service and obedience to the Lord. And before man, it may all look good and acceptable and pleasing. But then God goes deep down to search the very motives of our heart. What is our motivation to do whatever we are doing for the Lord? What is our motivation of our obedience to the Lord? Is it to please Jesus? Is it to please man? Because the only thing that, that is going to withstand that fire is if the, the motives of our hearts, deep down our hearts, it's nothing else but to just please Jesus. Whatever we're doing for the Lord, our service for the Lord, is nothing else but to please Jesus. When we are praying, when we're worshiping, it's nothing. You know, we don't care what anybody will say, what they will think. It's not that I want people to think I'm so holy, I'm so righteous, but it's just to please Jesus. Then it's going to be acceptable. When we go and we preach, and we're preaching repentance, and we're preaching holiness, the motive of my heart isn't to please my organization. It isn't to please my my you know you know my superiors in the in the organization. It isn't to please the people who are listening to me because they loved that previous sermon when I spoke about something similar. It isn't you know uh, the motive of my heart isn't in order to you know keep the members of my church. But if the motive of my heart is just to please God and God alone then when my work is tested by fire, it's going to be able to stand. 
when my service for the Lord is tested by fire, it's going to stand. Because the Lord says in Malachi, the, the verse we just read, the Bible says that God is like the refiner's fire. When he consumes on that day, anything, any impure motive, any motive of, you know, done out of competition, uh, you know, like those people that Paul was saying, they were preaching, but they were preaching out of competition in order to compete with the apostles. Those people who are doing things because, you know, they wanted self-glorification. They wanted to be known, to be famous, for people to say, oh, look, that's a great man of God. All those evil motives, they are but a work of the flesh. And they are all going to be consumed in the fire. All the motives of, let me, let me be holy. You know, let me look holy. You know, let me, let me act this way. Because you know, of my church, because of this, it's all going to be consumed to nothing in God's fire. So when we come, so all those things, every evil motive that is not of Jesus Christ in our service for the Lord, it is a work of the flesh. It is a fruit of the flesh. It is as a result of us walking by the flesh and not the spirit. So when we come to Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, the Bible says that walk in the spirit so that you may not fulfill the desires of your flesh. So the only way that we are going to be able to bear good fruit, the only way that we are going to serve the Lord, you know, with service that is acceptable before God, the only way that we are going to bring an offering of our lives that is acceptable before the Lord is if we walk by the Spirit, because we're not going to fulfill the desires of our flesh. Our desire is going to be to please Jesus and Him alone. You know, it's not going to be to, to keep people in my church. It's not going to be, you know, to, to say something because people loved it last time. You know, it's not going to be, you know, to, to say something or it's not going to be you know, to preach, to outdo this preacher. You know, it's not going to be anything impure. But it's going to be, you know, uh, it's going to be so pleasing before the Lord because it's going to be, you know, with our heart, wanting nothing but to please Jesus. Wanting nothing else but to please Jesus. So Galatians chapter 5 verse 24 says that those who belong to Christ have crucified their flesh with all its passions and desires so that shows us that if we examine our heart and we see that we haven't been serving the lord with a pure heart we haven't been serving the lord in a manner that is holy and acceptable before him then we have to crucify the flesh it's because our flesh is alive so we crucify the flesh in the presence of jesus christ because we know that our human strength accomplishes nothing. We're going to be overpowered by the flesh and its passions and desires. But the Bible says that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So the Lord is giving us this warning and correction and rebuke because he wants us to be aware of the traps that Satan has set in the path of many who follow Jesus Christ. So because we know this trap of the enemy to divert, you know, the purpose of our service for the Lord, we're not going to fall into the trap of the enemy, but we are going to go back. That's why the Lord is saying, go back to your first love. Go back to your first love, to that day when it was just you and Jesus and no one else. Go back to that place. Ask God to give you back that heart, that love, that first love that you have lost. Where your motivation was Jesus alone. Your motivation was never about belonging to this organization and fitting in. Your motivation was never about, you know, uh, fulfilling the expectations of people because they praised you last time. 
your motivation is not about all these things of the flesh that are unacceptable before Jesus, but your motivation is to please Jesus. The Bible tells us that Satan comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And that shows us that when Satan cannot kill your service for Jesus, he can, when he cannot stop you from bearing fruit of holiness, he will still try to destroy that fruit so that it is rejected by the Lord. He would defile it with jealousy. He would defile it with competition. He would defile it with human praise. He would defile it with the works of the flesh, with self-exhortation, you know, with, with all these desires to please man and not God. So even though you continue to bear fruit, even though you continue to serve Jesus, even though you continue to live holy, now he no longer cares. Satan no longer cares because he has already managed to defile, to defile you. Now your fruit is unacceptable because you're living a holy life, but it's, it's, you know, it's at the back of your mind. It's not out of real fear of God. It's because you want to continue belonging to your group, to your organization, you know, to this group of people who are approving of your works. It's because you want to, you know, to please man and not God. It's because you want people to say, oh, look, that's such a good Christian. Now that is your motivation. Satan has managed to defile your fruit, but Jesus is here to prune us so that we may truly bear good fruit that is pleasing to the Lord. And so that even when our work goes through the fire, we're going to be able, our work will, will be able to withstand God's fire and it is only his grace. We are unable to do it on our own. So that is why the Lord is saying, go back to your first love. Go back to a very intimate, very close relationship with Jesus and ask him to kill and to crucify the desires of your flesh. Lay bare the motives of your heart before the Lord. Lay it bare to him and say, Lord, yes, I'm living in obedience, but when I search the motives of my heart, it is, um, it is not pure before you. Purify the motives of my heart. Let it just be all about you. Let it just be all about pleasing you, Jesus. Let it be only for you and you alone. Let me not be a servant of man, Lord. Let me be a servant of God. Let me not care about, you know, earthly measurements. Let me not care about the empty praises of men. Let me not care about men's empty approval, Lord. Let me just care about your approval. So the Lord is calling us. The Lord is calling us in repentance, you know, back to our first love back to serving Jesus with a pure heart. In John chapter 15, verse 4, the Lord Jesus Christ tells us that, abide in me so that you may bear fruit. So we abide in Jesus or we remain in Christ through a very close relationship with God. We need to rekindle our fire for the Lord through prayer, through fasting, through reading the word of God, through worship. We rekindle that first love so that Jesus may consume anything that is not his in our lives and we need to remain in him because he's the one who's going to purify the motives of our service for the Lord so that it may be holy and acceptable before the Lord so we can do nothing on our own it's not by human strength but our human strength will fail us but it is the spirit of the Lord who gives us his grace. So we need to abide in the presence of the Lord and we will become fruitful and will not continue to bear the works of the flesh, will not continue to bear fruit of the flesh.